Hello everyone, I'm Joe Zagacki and welcome to Hurricane Game Day with University of Miami women's head coach Katie Meyer. Josh Darrow joins me in just a second along with the coach and coming up on the show, Coach Meyer joins us as we talk Hurricanes women basketball. We'll take you onto the court and into the locker room with everybody's favorite segment, Unlimited Access. And Kane's superstar guard, Raquana Williams, a.k.a. Bebe, sits down with Josh Darrow to talk nicknames and hoops. Don't go anywhere. Hurricane Game Day starts right now. Good, 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 good. Nice, 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 good. Where's the shooter? Oh, yeah. <laughs> And welcome to Hurricane Game Day with University of Miami head coach Katie Meyer here on CSS. Joe Zagacki alongside University of Miami coach Katie Meyer and Josh Darrow joins us as well. The Hurricanes women's basketball team, the hottest team in South Florida, the hottest basketball team in South Florida right now, winning at home 21 in a row, 6-1 and one in the ACC. Coach, congratulations, great start and a great win, a couple of great wins this past week at the Bank United Center. Let's start with the Georgia Tech game. Well, just a, a crucial victory for us on our team. I, I think it was just all grit. I mean, it wasn't pretty at all, but it was just a, b a bunch of mental toughness and a lot of hustle plays. And it always it always comes down to that against Georgia Tech. Every game we play them comes down to the last possession or overtime. In the last uh, six years, it's been that way. So another great performance by uh, Raquana Williams and Shanice Johnson. But Morgan Stroman's double-double, I think, really made the difference. Coach, uh, we were talking. Uh, so was that a fun game to coach or an, <laughs> agoni or an agonizing game to coach? You know what, it's funny because, uh, it, you know, I had a couple of our signees that text me and, and said, Coach, were you nervous? And I said, you know, I wasn't nervous. I was so mad that we were so flat to start the game that I just had this energy of like just this push and this drive. And then I watched the game afterwards and I got a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia Tech has become a pretty good rivalry because usually the games are always tight. And once again, this one goes over time. Yeah, and you know, we recruit in each other's backyard. I mean, there, there's a lot of commonalities between the two programs. I, I think they play hard and we play hard. Um, and we, we, you know, Atlanta and Miami they recruit the same cities a lot. So um, a lot of, uh, you know, mixed uh, experiences in that game. And uh, I thought it was just amazing how our team, we wanted to play with a ton of emotion, but we wanted to have our composure. And I think that was what it was. We, we played with composure. All right, so Raquana Williams, Bay Bay, 20, 27. Maybe, maybe you guys had a different, uh, uh, you know, different look at the uh, her start to the game, right? But, right. but we can all agree that uh, <laughs> she came through for you in the clutch. Yeah, t you know, ACC opponents are the coaches are great, and they're going to scheme and they're going to try to take Bay and Mo out of the game early. And so then it's a matter of me watching and then seeing with the staff talking how they play and what do we need to do. So it's hard for them to start off early, yeah, uh, really well. And so throughout the course of the game, we have to change the timing of our attacks for them, and it takes a while. So I had to sit Bay Bay down um, early in the game and then uh, just kind of talk her through it and then get her back in and then she exploded. Well, it clearly worked. That was good strategy on your <laughs> yeah. part. All right, this uh, is my favorite part of the show, one of my favorite parts of the show, as Coach Meyer and her staff and players have granted us unlimited access to her team. This week, we take you onto the court and into the locker room during the Canes ACC matchup against Boston College. They choose to maybe pass up the court to break a press. We choose to go until we're stopped, okay? They choose to play in the air. We choose to knock that ball on the ground and go get it on the ground, okay? They choose to big possession, probably run a high low. We choose to attack, attack, attack. We are Miami, we will choose to be Miami, and we will not back down from being who we are tonight. We're getting this game, we are getting this game. Baseline. 
Yederstrom corner. That's a willing passer in Sinise Johnson and why she's one of the most versatile players. Murphy, great drop step. Missed the bunny. Johnson, Strowman, Williams. Oh, that's nice. Unselfish. Wow. <laughs> that's not a shy freshman, is it? Kristen Doherty is step back three. All game long. Boston College throws it away. Johnson. And Miami with points off a turnover. Slices into the lead even more. That can make baseline inbound plays difficult to defend, but Johnson has the steal with Saunders. And she'll lay it up and in, and Miami has their first lead since early in the first half. How does Boston College react? Johnson the steal. And just like that, Shanice Johnson and the Hurricanes have come roaring back and taken a 37-34 lead, a 10-0 run. Williams, man! I even think Raquana looked at Toman before she pulled the trigger like, this is mine. Another three, another bomb. That's not even hitting the rim. Williams, again! Williams, oh! It right there. A dagger! That might be the one. The chemistry of this team, defensively, in the coverage, Stroman, Sill, you guys don't get enough credit. Mm -hmm. You guys are everywhere. You are making reads. You're, um, one time you did the up and back, and they missed a little pull-up, and we, it was a huge play for us. So you guys are so smart. Uh, I really think you guys did a great job. I really I, I don't think I've ever been more amazed by a team than I was by you guys today. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right, very good stuff. All right, Coach, almost uh, tears of joy. You really love this team, and uh, you get worked up with them. I do. They're, uh, they're very special, and, it, you know, we're an emotional team. I'm an emotional coach, uh, and I, I don't hide it. You know, it's, I think the thing I love about this team the most is we're very authentic. In the locker room, we speak the truth. In the film room, we speak the truth. But then when you get to celebrate something so special and a gritty comeback, um, you know, I'm going to let them know how proud I am of them, how much I love them, and usually that makes me choke up. Well, the other thing too that also has to, you know, in times like that, you show you, you show your true emotion. But that emotion can help fuel yeah. this team right. uh, to the start you've been on to and really lay that passion out on the court. Yeah, there's been about three or four games that we just did it with absolute heart, and uh, we were mismatched or had, you know, things go against us, and then we just rally with some spirit and then overcome it. And um, you know, it's it's awful fun to coach. It's exhausting, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hurricanes are off to a great start at six and one. We are just getting warmed up on the show right now. Don't go anywhere as we continue. When we come back, we'll talk more hoops with Coach Meyer and we'll introduce you to the leading scorer in the ACC, Canes guard Raquana Williams. will join us as we continue on Hurricane Game Day here on CSS. We're coming right back. Hurricane Game Day with University of Miami head coach Katie Meyer, Joe Zagaki with Josh Darrow talking University of Miami women's basketball, the Hurricanes 6-1 in conference play. But as coach reminded us during the commercial, Murderer's Row coming up, coach, and it begins 
with the Blue Devils of Duke. And uh, by the way, when Josh and I were at Duke a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> knows. we saw a very nice <laughs> picture. And the picture, in a big frame, yeah. was you. Nice, nice. Yeah, it was yep. nice. Yep. We had to stop. And we she took, does, a, we took a picture <laughs> of the picture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's just say I was a late bloomer. <laughs> <laughs> the hair, the hair dude. Oh, very, mm -hmm. very in style. Very in style. Well, I mean, it was, you know, the 90s. Uh, true, true. <laughs> Meanwhile. Sort of. <laughs> late, late 80s. Going to Duke is a tough challenge. It is. It's a great environment. You know, and I think we're at the stage in our program where uh, I think last year we had those signature wins where we went up against top 25 teams and beat a couple of them, and uh, that established us as a team that was threatening. Uh, a little different mentality now. Uh, we're, we're threatening, but we're also chasing in the standings, and that's um, that's fun. You know, it's not it's not just a once in a while. Hopefully, we can n knock off a, a Duke of Maryland or North Carolina, but you know, we have to think in terms of we need to do that in order to be in the top four of the ACC and get a buy in the conference tournament. So it's a real shift, uh, and you know, coming out of those next three games, that'll tell us where we're at. Coach, you, you talk about your team and, you know, last year to this year, you're threatening, chasing, and mm -hmm. but now you're 6-1, right? Right. So that, that sort of has to embolden your team as you, as you take on these next three games, that the mindset, the confidence, that's all laid in for a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, it is. And, you know, you set yourself up by winning games at home, and we've done that. We've taken care of ACC, and we started with two road games. So the schedule has been good for us early. And now it flips, and it's really, really, really difficult. And we're at Duke, and we're at Carolina, and then we get a home game, but it's Maryland. So those are all ranked teams, and all awesome teams. But, you know, we're ranked two, and we've got to change that mentality and, and just go into the game thinking that they should be fearing us just as much as we're respecting them. Speaking of fearing you, you've got two of the leading scorers in the ACC, and then you have Morgan Stroman, mm -hmm. who's been outstanding for you. What do you think, or who do you think the opponent has at the top of their scouting report? What do you think it might say? Well, I, I think they start with Mo and Bay. I mean, there's no question that those two kids are so dynamic, and they have the ball in their hands so much for us. But then you have somebody like a Stephanie Yederstrom who comes up in overtime uh, against Georgia Tech and hits two crucial threes because the opponent was double-teaming and swarming Bay and Mo. Uh, so the savviness of my two guards to know that th when they're double-teamed, game on the line, kick it to the shooter and hit those two threes, that's where we're special this year. You look at the, you know, at the body. Talk about being special. You know, you pull out the box score from this past week, and mm. Raquana Williams, 27 points. Right. Raquana Williams, 20. It's like, did I read? Wait, am I on the right <laughs> page? Am I reading? Am I looking at the same box? Uh, the different box scores or the right. same box scores? Because to get that kind of uh, consistency mm. is huge. It's so funny because we just expect her to score, and and I don't. It, we game plan just okay. She's going to score. Now what else? And I, you know, I, I hate to feel like someone that special is underappreciated, but in a sense. She has so much pressure on her to score that um, we build everything around that. Or how are they guarding her? You know, how are they guarding Mo? What do we do then? Um, so you know, they just carry a lot. Those two kids just carry so much on their shoulders and do so much for us. And but it allows somebody like a Morgan Stroman, Stephanie Ederstrom, Crystal Saunders, even Chanel Williams, big weekend for us. So th that that allows them to emerge. And I think that when we're all on in the same game, we, you know, we're going to be successful against top ten teams. But until that happens, you know, we we've got to put a little too much on Bay and Mo. Well, in the Boston College game, you put some on yeah. Sylvia Bullock, and she delivered for yeah, you. Yeah, Sylvia Bullock with a pull-up jumper, you know, to, to, to tie the game or take the lead. So, you know, it, that's what's fun about this team. They all accept their roles. Uh, they want to expand them, and they're willing to expand them. And when we need them, they usually do step up and expand them. So, you know, it's not just a two-man show. As if, uh, that, you talk about fun as a coach. I know sometimes the games can be a wear and tear, but when you have those kind of star players and then you have the complimentary players, is it fun to kind of – uh, sit in your office and do that coaching chess, chess match where you can kind of draw up some plays and, and, and kind of tweak things or as, you, as the game evolves, as matchups mm -hmm. evolve, you talked at the end of the Georgia Tech game that they provided some matchups that allowed you right. to exploit them and, and help get the win. Um, is that sort of the, when you come down to it, there's so many fun aspects of this job, that's right. got to be one of them. Well, it is, and, you know, we try to keep it real simple. Uh, I mean, you know, my coaching staff gives me a bunch of information during the game, but I always just choose the simplest one. You know, we do have two very special attack guards, so we're going to start there. We're going to start there, and then we're going to build from that conclusion. And so, you know, if they're playing with energy and they're playing tough, it makes it pretty easy. You know, the problem arises is when we're a little flat or we're hesitant, and then I have to kind of pull something out of the bag, and that, that's what happened in the first half of Georgia Tech. We were so fortunate to just be down seven at halftime. I mean, down seven at home at halftime, you think a coach would be angry. I went into that locker room saying, we are very fortunate. This should be a 15-point ball game. We've got to turn this thing around. We've got to turn it around by the eight-minute media, and that's exactly what happened. Coach, you mentioned you have the attacking guards, but how do you deal with, with size? When you play some teams mm -hmm. that, have, that have had size, how do you deal with that? We file them out. 
I mean, to be, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what we Great do. Great answer. No, we, we go into the game with that mentality. We, we start, we, you'll see us in the first half, and I, I know the crowd kind of goes, well, you know, what are they doing? They don't look the same. We're going to concentrate a couple possessions here and there on, uh, on isolating some people to get them in foul trouble. And we might not even score on that possession. And it might be a setup for later, but I'm going to remember it. I'm going to go back to it at a crucial time. So our first 10 possessions of a basketball game are something that I have in mind that I think need to happen throughout the course of the game. Well, you're going to be proud of me because I've been working on my jump shot. <laughs> and the reason I've been working on my jump shot is because when Hurricane Game Day returns here on CSS, we're going to introduce you to one of the best shooters in the country, Bebe. That's what they call her. Raquana Williams joins us after the break right here on CSS. Welcome back, everybody, to Hurricane Game Day. Josh Darrow, Justin Antwell, and Raquana. What you want to introduce yourself? You got me. Raquana Williams, otherwise <laughs> known as Bay Bay. So let's let's start with the nickname. Mm -hmm. Where'd you get the nickname from, and who gave it to you? Um, pretty much my family. I'm the baby of five, so like my brother. Like it was kind of a prank, like Bay Bay kids, and then because I didn't know what Bay Bay kid was, so <laughs> it's like, all right, you'll be the baby. So. so let me ask you this, does anyone else, does anyone call you Raquana? Does everyone call you Bebe and who left in your life would still call you Raquana? Um, actually my family called me Quana. Quana. Yeah, and sometimes they'll call me Unique for my middle name. All right. So, not many Raquana. Not many, mostly Bebe. Mostly Bebe. Uh, Bebe, just how special has this season been for your ACC's leading score? I mean, how much fun is, is your team having right now? So much fun. Like, just love that we have for each other. We're having so much fun. When did you realize this team was going to be special? Was it last year's WNIT run when you, when you saw the potential? Was it the win over Georgetown? Was it summer workouts? When did you realize that, that your squad uh, could, could have a chance to do something great this year? Um, when we started being hard on each other, when coach didn't have to step in and be like, okay, guys, do this, when we started jumping each other and like getting each other shorts and wanting to be great. Raquana, what, uh, you've had a nice run here to, to start the season. What, um, was there ever a point during the year where, uh, where you felt like it kind of got contagious, all that winning got contagious and that confidence just got greater? Yeah, <laughs> yes, um, it starts in practice. So, like it all started in practice. Like <clears throat> just getting confidence and energy from, from Shanice and stuff. What, um, you guys are the, you know, two leading scorers in the ACC. Mm -hmm. um, what uh, uh, that, that must that must be a lot of fun in terms of uh, you know in terms of accolades and whatnot, but also in terms of production. Uh, uh, but we also know in talking that uh, you can never pass the ball backwards to Shanice, right? <laughs> so if you're in the lead, you always have to take the shot. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I take Explain. my chances. Um, I take my chances. I pass backwards. Um, if it's two on one and it's me and Shanice, I'm gonna pass it to her no matter what. Like, I take my chances and get taken out the game. So, <laughs> I'm going to pass backwards, <laughs> even though I shouldn't, but I will. But baby, how have you matured in your three years here at the University of Miami thus far? Your freshman year, you played sparingly. I mean, I know you were a bit uh, injured. Last year, second team all ACC, and this year, you're really clicking on all cylinders. How have you matured? Um, listening to my coach, doing exactly what she told me to do to be great. Um, not being hard-headed, like, giving my all every time I go on the court, um, just doing everything I need to do for the team to win. And your assist numbers and rebounds are up this year. Are you really becoming an all-around player, not just a sheer scorer? Try my best. Try my best. It's not all about scoring. How many times have you taken extra shots after practice with one of the managers or one of the assistant coaches or with Coach Meyer? Every practice. After every practice. You're from, Pah you're from Pahokee, um, so it's not too far from Miami. Where am I from? Pahokee. Okay. Right what I say. Yeah. <laughs> right what I get that did I get that right or wrong? Yeah, you got it right. Uh, I got it right. That's what I thought. You're from Pahokee. So, but you, you don't you don't spend a lot of time at home, right? No. Because what uh, you can't get better at home, right? You can only get better if you put time in the gym. Being here, this is my home. I mean, this is this is the best place for me right now. So. What's um your style of play? Uh, your team creates a lot of turnovers. Uh, a lot of steals, mm -hmm. a, l a little bit, a little bit of a different style than a year ago. But mm -hmm. you said that uh, the team is bought in, and it's also it's a lot of fun. Why? It's a lot of fun. Um, we know each other. We know what each other's gonna do. Like, 
I know if somebody, the um, offensive player beat me that Morgan had my back, like still gonna step up and take a charge. I'm always gonna steal the ball, so. And, and your cousin is Alfonso Smith, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the NFL defensive back. So did he teach you any kind of tricks about how to make some steals in the backcourt and anticipate some passes? Not really. <laughs> I mean, I um, hardly get to talk to him now. So he's always busy. Um, he came down for the Clemson game and then he had to go back up. With, with the team having so much success, are fans around campus and students kind of recognizing, you know, the Miami Hurricanes women's basketball players now in the cafeteria and yes. the food court? Yes, it's a, um, a lot of fun. Um, even the professors um, took a whole class to talk about basketball. <laughs> so it was kind of cool just to get that recognition and people like finally realizing that like we're a pretty good team. All right, Raquana Williams, Bay Bay <laughs> Quana, we got all the names down. <laughs> we'll be back with more Hurricanes game day right after this. Welcome back to Hurricane Game Day here on CSS with University of Miami head women's basketball coach Katie Meyer, Josh Darrell also with me. Well, try not to look past too many of the big games. As we mentioned, you got Duke and Maryland, Carolina coming up. But your squad, uh, this one that's having success, this is a team that has grown up together. Right. And they lost their share of games, and now maybe some of that experience from the first couple of years is paying off. There's no question. You know, the poise at the end of the game, the lessons learned. Um, you know, I, I, I keep a lot of timeouts in my pocket now that I had to call last year, but this year, you know, I can kind of look at them and they'll look at me and understand, you know, the game in the moment. I trusted our defense last night um, against Georgia Tech, you know, down two, didn't call a timeout because Georgia Tech was out. And I just said to the team, you know, I, I don't want them to set a play. And they're like, okay, coach. And Georgia Tech's, you know, eighth player off the bench hit a bucket to force overtime. That's okay. As long as it wasn't their leading score and it wasn't a three, we took care of business there and got overtime win. So it's just a different team. There's a different mentality, and I'm doing a lot less coaching late game. Coach, uh, 21 games in a row at home. Mm -hmm. uh, you start building up numbers like that. That's, it. That's a pretty impressive stat. Plus, it shows um, that coming here into Miami, um, that's a tough task for the opponent, and we know how important um, the home environment in college basketball. We talked about emotion right. earlier in the show, but how important emotion is when, when you're on the floor for, for, the, for the crowd. Right. Well, there's no question in my mind that crowd, the Georgia Tech crowd, uh, you know, made the difference in the ball game because we had no reason to celebrate. There was nothing happening for us until about 10 minutes left in the game. We were stalled out. We were hesitant. We lacked confidence. We didn't have any swag, nothing. And the crowd just reacted to a couple of threes, you know, and what was great was Bay hit the first three and then Bay got swarmed and kicked it to Mo and Mo hit the second three. And a 10 point game became a four point game in two possessions by the two stars, but they shared the basketball with each other. And the crowd erupted and I thought, you know, we got a chance. Crowd gets another chance uh, when you come home against Maryland. Oh my God, we're going to need a huge crowd. You know, last time we played at Maryland, we beat them there and we snapped their whatever home game winning streak, 56 or something like that. And they had 5,000 people there plus. And so we need to get a good, a good environment for this one. And another suggestion would be to check out for more information on the University of Miami women's basketball team to go to HurricaneSports.com. HurricaneSports.com will have all of your information, not only in University of Miami women's basketball, but football, men's basketball, baseball, tickets, and all kinds of merchandise as well, all at HurricaneSports.com. It's the new and improved University of Miami website, HurricaneSports.com. Now for Josh Darrow and University of Miami head coach Katie Meyer. Come on out and see the Hurricanes play, Maryland. Thanks for joining us here on Hurricane Game Day here on CSS. So long, everybody.